What's up, YouTube? It's Fitzbro, and this is my Age of Guide for the Mongol Civilization in Age of Empires 4. In this guide, I'm going to be going through all of the different Age Up landmarks and which ones I think are the best ones to use to get the edge on the battlefield. Now, I have some other build order guides on the channel for the Mongols, so I will leave a link in the description. Go ahead and check those out if you want some build orders to get you started with the game. Particularly, the opening for the Mongols is quite complex. Okay, let's take a look at these landmarks. So, here in the first age, you have the options of aging up with either the Deer Stones or the Silver Tree to go to age two. The Deer Stones, when set up, Deer Stone provides the Yam Speed Aura. Upon completion, instantly grants the Yam Network Technology. So, this is going to be boosting the speed of your units. Now, this is nice for getting your villagers around town center move a little faster. And if you're fighting under this, make sure your military move faster. You can move it and use it to get a boost of speed maybe on the front line. But early on in the age two, I don't find myself typically going on the offensive with my landmarks. Um, for this reason, I actually think the silver tree it way outweighs uh, the deer stone as far as the better option. The silver tree is an economic landmark, acts as a market, can build traders 50% faster and add a 50% reduced gold cost. This gives some super, super uh, economic boost to your economy. There's actually a lot more things that go behind this that isn't explained in the tooltip. So I will try my best to go through that right now. I have an entire guide actually that's dedicated to uh, this specific landmark and why I think it's one of the most OP in the entire game. So you're going to be able to get these traders once this is complete. Now you can typically build this at the market, but these are going to be cheaper traders. Now where it really becomes lucrative is you can actually move this landmark. Um, so you can increase that distance. Um, but when you pair it with this technology, the superior mobility here, this is going to make uh, this building move really fast. So what I do is I actually get superior mobility while I'm aging up and I use it because sometimes, I mean, this was a nice spawn, but sometimes your OBU is you know a little further away. You can instantly pack this up and move it over to the stone so you can produce these traders two at a time. Now two at a time, you see, look how cheap they are. Uh, 74 wood, 36 coin, and that 112 uh, stone. And you're able to really quickly get a lot of traders out on the map and start getting economic bonuses from them as they are basically bringing back that gold, but they also can bring back food and wood. So I will show you this tooltip here uh, once I get my first uh, trader out. Okay, so the ideal number to hit early on is seven traders, and I'll show you why. So as you add traders to the route, it shows you the total number, and it unlocks tiers of the Silk Road. At three traders, you get a plus 10% food for each trip. For tier two, it'll add 10% food and 10% wood. And then for with seven traders, 10% food, wood, and gold. So that's a lot of res coming back to your civilization and a great early on bonus. A lot of times I pull all my villagers off gold and just use traders to do this. Um, now you'll see them go pick this up and uh, let's see right now we have what four. So you can see they have food in addition to the uh, coin that he has there. Now um, I'm not going to trade all of them right now but what you can do is pack this up and you can move it to the corner of the map and since I got the mobility this thing's going to move really quickly and all you have to do is retask these to follow here. Uh, you'll use this trade option and task it back on here. They will actually pay out the rate of the, the distance of where you put this. So you're going to wait until this gets all the way down here and landed. And then you are going to select this, hit Q and select the uh, silver tree. And you will see it instantly boosts the rate. So I'll show you. It won't go all the way here. So right now they have 18 uh, gold at the moment. And watch this. I'm going to hit Q. And instantly, now it is worth 94 gold. In addition to this, it also drops off food. I'm not sure if it always gives you the wood or not. I, I, I have to do some further investigation. But regardless, you can see the power of this landmark. Um, so that's why I think the silver tree is the best option for going into the second age. Let me show you here was as it drops it off. You'll see it, it will, in fact, give uh, that full 94 gold. Look at that. So pretty cool. Now, let's look at the next age. So going into age three, your options are, and I know I'm going to say it wrong, the Kurulatai and the Step uh, Redout. Redout? Redout? I think that sounds right. 
uh, go ahead and correct me in the comments. I always like to pronounce things correctly, so uh, I, I appreciate your help with that. Okay, so looking at these two options, you have a military one and an economic landmark. Okay, so on the left, when the con is nearby, the cruelty heals all nearby damage units and provides a plus 25% damage bonus for 30 seconds. I'm gonna come back to that. Here on the right, acts as a girl. Gold dropped off at this landmark is increased by plus 50%. Now, my issue with this, from what I just explained to you before, is I'm probably using my traders for the bulk of my gold needs. So for that very reason, it makes this a little bit less powerful, though this is a, a, a great eco bonus if you do have gold, gold miners. Um, but I think the one on the left is the better option. The way you wanna utilize this landmark is make sure you have the superior mobility and what you do is you take this to the front line while you're in your battle so you'll be running up with your cavalry and you will throw this down on the front line and it'll be giving that instant boost uh to those units uh it, it, it when the when the cons nearby it heals your nearby units and provides that damage bonus so it is a, a great way to just give like a, a military buff um, when you're on the front line you can of course use it defensively pull back heal up your troops after raid uh, there's just so many ways you can use this. So definitely hands down, I think this is the best landmark option. We've already gone up with a you know an economic landmark for H2. So I, I, I think it's okay to invest in this military landmark. Okay, this leaves us age four. So for age four, we have the Cognate Palace and then the White Stupa. So on the left, spawns a cavalry of a uh, cavalry army of horsemen, mangudai, or lancers every 90 seconds. So it's just gonna be training units for you. Or on the right, acts as an obu and produces 240 stone per minute without a stone outcropping. So I think the one on the right is typically going to be your best option. Reason being, late in the game, stone's going to run low, um, or you might even not have a place for an obu if you run out of all the stone on the map. This is going to help you with continuing to, to uh, produce that stone. You can also move this, right? Because it acts as an ovo, and you can move it to go put it on all your military buildings instead of moving all your military buildings to this. So definitely some options that you can use this for some late game uh, economic bonuses. Now, maybe you just really need that extra army. Maybe the, the enemy's bearing down on you and you just need every troop you can get. I maybe could see some uses of this, but in general, I think you're going to be able to buy H4, have an economy rolling to be be able to afford to produce these units. I think this is going to be your better option. So I'll go ahead and build this final landmark. Those are my recommendations. For H2, I recommend getting the Silver Tree. For H3, I recommend the Krulatai. And then for H4, the White Stupa. For all of these, always pair with the superior mobility that you can get while you're aging up to H2. So you can move these around quickly. I mean, look at this. I could deploy this in and out of the battlefield. This is a really, really <laughs> speedy building. It actually becomes quite funny sometimes when the enemy comes to get it and you just pack up and go. So highly recommend getting this tech. Um, and let me know in the comments below what you think about these age up options. And if these are your favorite landmarks, if you have other suggestions, give me a good case for why we should age up with those particular landmarks. Until next time, be sure to check out my Mongol strategy guys on the channel and I will see you guys in the next video.